Okay, so this level is gonna, ha or this episode is gonna have some pretty cool stuff. So we've got the life tank now, which is really, really important. We got that from uh, Dark Manus's stage last time. Uh, what we're gonna do is execute an exploit, which I'll kind of explain as we go through the process. Right now, all I'm really doing is spending money. Um, and I'm gonna do it by getting a couple sorta of specific items to make my current uh, loadout a little bit more convenient for right. everybody. So, basically just, you know, kind of follow what I'm picking up here, um, weapon up. So, mostly focusing on X, naturally, because that's the, the run that we're focusing on, but I end up using everybody in this, so, you know. Um, but right now, it's basically just a matter of getting down below 50 metals without hitting zero or none. So, right. Uh, so it's kind of a balancing act. I actually had to go through here and kind of plan this out quite a few times. Uh, end on Prickle Barrier because it's important. Then you'll go up to Life Charge. Uh, that costs 50, but you can buy it with less than 50. Uh, obviously, this is only a thing that you can execute when you the have the sub so not a life bottle. It does not work the same way. Right. And um, once we get through this, I'll carry on a little bit further. Is their copy chip. It's real exciting, though. Like, I've been waiting to talk chip about this. can actually change a Reploid's DNA. Did you examine my data? Yes. I compared your data to the copy chips in new generation Reploids. We're getting some more I found heavy, important plot very now, interesting. Which, yeah. kind of a given. It just feels like Sigma? Quiet. The data embedded in the copy chips closely resembles that of Sigma. I'm not exactly sure what this means, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't worry me. Wait, I know what the actual answer is, but without knowing the actual answer, who's... What fucking idea was it to put Sigma data into the new generation of wrestling? Uh, I see. I like it as a plot device in this, and it meshes well with the ending thing that yeah. we get. Like not the end cutscene, like the very Let's final moment in this game. Uh, but it. this makes it really, and I'll do his subtitle in a moment. Um, it makes it a really interesting case of like, okay, oh, well, so we know fun. Sigma's involved. He's always involved. It's not a surprise. And now the big deal is like, oh, they're like all Sigma. That's real bad. Like we should probably look into this, and You'll it's like complete training an actual for each area fair oh shit. On. The next area may change depending so, on how well you've completed. This is uh, assassin sent from within the artificial mind. Optic sunflower. I like optic sunflower. I think his design is real neat. Um, this stage is basically the premise of Cyber Peacock stage, but like set to eleven. Well, no. See, I I like. The idea of this level, and I actually like most of the testing. It's a little stressful. Um, the only reason it's really stressful, though, is if you're going for 100% completion. Um, once you finish all of the uh, 10 tests in this area, it's the whole stage is just tests, there's never anything that isn't, uh, you will get uh, rare metal rewards. And then there's also one hidden in one of the intermediate rooms and an armor capsule that I can't get quite yet, which is fine because. Two of the rare metals are rewards. One of them you get for doing real well, the other you get for doing perfect, and they overlap in the same area. So that's admittedly a little bit of a pain, but it kind of works out because chances are decently good you'll need to backtrack for the armor capsule with the later weapon anyway. Mm. So in a way, it kind of does encourage you, like, okay, don't worry about your first run through. You might get a good reward out of it, but you don't have to perfect it just yet. But when you come through next time and you're way stronger, there you go. So that's the uh, that's the that's the exploit. So what we've what? done, what we've done, or what I've done, is um, since filling the bottle costs 50, but you can do it with less than that, you're triggering a buffer underflow. So you buy something for 50, or that costs 50, but it uh, requires, or you only have like 15. Game doesn't know what the fuck to do as soon as you pick up another metal, or I think even take damage will set it off too. It's basically just any value change or right. something. I don't know if the same thing happens if you use special weapon ammo. I it might basically do the, same thing. the way they store their money, it, the money value is from zero to like. 60,000 something total, probably? Something like that. 600,000? I can't remember what the actual digit is for. So, this is one of my least favorite rooms, and this is a super leap of faith thing. And it also highlights something nice, is once you've cleared all the targets in one of these test rooms, you are completely immune to death. You see me fall into that pit there, 
that wouldn't dump me out of the test or anything. That would kill me and start over. And you can see the white sort of braille in the background. This one, real quick, this is where you want to use your dump toy. Um, so these are all on, like, kill them quickly is the test. And because, you know, they're bouncing up and down, you have to navigate between platforms. I've seen some people use their double attack on the previous one. Just use it there. There's not... I don't think there's a single better use of the double attack outside of boss fights anywhere else in the game than that room. Uh, and that, I was just firing back at the armor capsule that I can't get to yet. So we'll right. see that room specifically again um, during collection, which will not take long. This one is nice because you can just kind of out damage it quickly. Uh, the yellow timer doesn't mean anything bad. It's if it hits red that you know you've quote unquote failed. Um, and that'll basically make it so the white braille in the background gets knocked down a notch. You can see there's three levels to it. Mm -hmm. um, in order to get the perfect rare metal at the end, you need to stay across the top all the time. That means uh, beating the expected score on all of the tests and not dying at all. If you die, you automatically bump down one. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's kind of strange to me that most of the really difficult ones are in the start of it, and then they kind of ramp down in difficulty. I don't know if that's just, like, playstyle or loadout doing anything, but you it's not really the biggest metal. deal. This is the only rare metal you'll encounter normally. Uh, again, unless you want to count the armor capsules, which they're not rare metals, so you shouldn't. Um... But yeah, from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. It's just gonna be basic tests... Uh, I believe this is... No, the last one. Okay, no, this is vile. Um, so this trap room would normally be two of the uh, new generation Repolids. Right. It's still a pretty easy fight. You'll see it in the collection episode. Is it actual, like, test? So that, the, rec uh, the Repolids are a test. When vile is in, it actually has the benefit of not having any tests. Unless you die, you basically can't fail this room, which is really beneficial because the next one is kind of a freebie as well, because uh, you will always be on that one. So whatever score you're, or whatever level you're going in at, mm -hmm. chances are pretty good you're going to beat it at that score, and there's no time limit, it's just jump up. So it's pretty good that way. Uh, and now I'm just letting X recover. So, uh, this is now the most difficult room. Uh, it's a pretty simple jumping puzzle, quote-unquote. The, uh, one of, I think, the drawbacks to the 3D in this game, and I think it's one of the only drawbacks to the 3D, is that the hit detection on these spikes is really kind of tough to figure out sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, their hitbox feels like it extends a little bit farther out of the crystals. That will be a much larger problem later on, but that room is pretty now famous or infamous to me personally for ruining these perfect runs. Why are we sort of on Mars all of a sudden? I think it's basically just a, here's a room, like here's a cyber test room. Even though those uh, moons aren't the right shape. Uh, no, it's just fake. Like, I don't think it's supposed to be a real place. Uh, I kind of like to think of this as a reference to, um, like... Uh, Crescent Grizzly stage and uh, Slash Beast stages, since it's kind of like Truck Convoy in Wasteland with Moon in the background. It probably isn't that, but uh, it's I like It's clearly those stages, a reference to Commander Yamark stage. Where there's with like multiple the moons. moons, yeah. Uh, so this is basic. It's actually kind of a neat mini boss because you don't see that many types of enemies, mm -hmm. or that many of this type of enemy in this game. Uh, you have to beat it in phases, basically. So you'll start out with the cannons, then all the dragon segments, then the head, then the electric spark generator, and then right. just the regular um, bulb right in the middle. Uh, and I like that, except for the trap room area, everything is bulb rights, just being dicks to you. Uh, so this is the perfect rare metal. metal. Don't we even remember what that is. <laughs> I should probably know stop. that, but it doesn't matter now that we've executed that uh, exploit, we'll be able to buy everything. And um, oh, Hi, this is fun. Can you hear me? I'm just gonna let her talk. So, CM stands for Command Mission. That is on a memory card file. You can also do it via password entry. It also stands for Cutman. Uh, this is a really, really fun Easter egg. Currently, I'm wearing the uh, You Can't Take Minor Damage body armor. So this is just a nice sort of, like, here's how strong X is compared to, like, classic-level characters. Uh, Cutman counts as minor damage against X, even though he's a pretty damaging boss from the original, and you can take X, him down really can you hear me? He'll also die in one Nova Strike from the ultimate armor, which is pretty entertaining, too, because you'll just hear the 8-bits, it's like, oh, man, come back! Just instantly push 
I'm pretty sure I do in the Hunter version, so... Or, a uh, regular, rather. So, now we've got Optic Sunflower. Weak to Green Spinner. This is actually, I think, one of the first major weakness weapons I'll be using in battle. Um, I don't know why. Probably because it's kind of a fire explosive, but... I don't know, maybe it's heavy artillery versus frail target. Doesn't matter. Since you've made it this far, you must have figured it out. You must have I really like Optic Sunflower. I wish it was a she, because it's he. Um, control, I wish the flower was a hat and not the face. But see, that's kind of what I like about it, is it's it's the same sort of like, let's do something a little bit more creative mindset of Tunyon, but not just burningly retarded. Like, it's silly. You might not like Sunflower, but I think the design is a lot more solid. I love his whole stage. Like, I love the aesthetic of Troya Base. The music is really nice. All the details are really cool there. And uh, coming up, her, uh, wow, his uh, overdrive attack. I need to mention that, too. I've been calling them Desperation, which the official term is overdrive attack. Uh, is a lot of fun. Like, it's pretty cool, even if I suck at dodging it in this video. During the refights, it's really better. Uh, and one of the more interesting holds, too, as opposed to, like, it's green slime, it's just all optical stuff. Like, his ability is light and teleportation, and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, plus, I have a thing for, like, the test practitioner red I guess. He's really good at trolling the fuck out of your missiles, too. Yeah, um, he will... Like, basically, as soon as he decides I'm going to teleport, he's immune to damage. And uh, what I'm doing wrong here, uh, and it's mostly me panicking and not wanting to take contact damage from the boss, is you don't want to jump and dash, you just want to dash along the ground. If you jump dash or jump or anything in the air, you're making too much vertical movement versus horizontal, and you're still getting caught by the white right. hitbox of Earth Crush, uh, which that's Zero's Giga attack. And uh, the reason I'm going to be doing the next stage that I've chosen next is because now I have that weapon, which is good for more collection. Uh, and I'll say up front right now, since there's not a lot else before this episode ends, uh, I'm not going to buy all of the items right away. I'm going to kind of wait until the fortress stages. So A, you're not going to... Or collection, rather. So you're not going to have to watch a bunch of purchasing until it's the collection episode anyway. And I kind of want to do it in order, quote-unquote, even though I have the ability to get everything right now, or everything that I have unlocked, so... Right. It's not going to be maximum cheese right away. There's a nice double player rank. Super proud of that, even though you could go as high as triple. 